I have major updates regarding the Lucas situation. No, it's not over yet, and we can all blame it on SM and their incompetence. Guys, I'm seriously furious today. Does Lisa ever rest? Because I swear, lately she's always doing something. DJ Snake has gotten together the best ensemble of artists, and it's going to be fire. Sure, I haven't heard it yet, but they have Megan the Stallion and Lisa in the same track, and you expect it not to be a bop? The track Sexy Girl is coming out on October 22nd, as confirmed by DJ Snake himself, and the filming for the music video has also been completed. Lisa is also rumored to appear in the music video, though she and Megan film their parts separately. Survival shows being rigged isn't exactly big news for K-pop fans, but imagine how the contestants who were done dirty must feel. Putting all that work and giving all of their best just for the producers to rig everything in somebody else's favor. That would have been enough for me to turn into the Joker. Former Produce X 101 contestant, My Teen, and BOI member, Gim Kukan, shared a similar story on a survival program, Tomorrow's national singer. During his experience, he opened up about feeling trapped and experiencing difficulties as a performer. He confessed, there were many heartaches during auditions. For several months, I felt as if I was trapped in the past. I even thought about giving up on performing my favorite dances and songs. However, I still thought that what I wanted was to be a singer, so I took on the challenge. Back in 2019, Gim Kukong participated as a contestant in the fourth season of Produce 101, where he landed at number 21 and was eliminated from the show. However, it was revealed that Gim Kukong was one of the victims of the voting manipulation, it was prematurely eliminated. His real ranking on the show wasn't revealed. After seeing his performance of Only Look At Me, Oh My Girl's Ho Jung shed tears and revealed that she was his fellow trainee in the past. She said, He is a really passionate and hardworking friend of mine. In the past, he was someone who had difficulty dancing, which shocked the panelists because of how amazing of a dancer he is now. Thinking of how he's one of the few contestants who didn't get discouraged by the results is very touching. I wish the producers didn't have to rely on dirty tricks like these knowing how much it will affect the contestants. On today's episode of Female Idols Getting Scrutinized for the Dumbest Reasons Ever, we have Joy, who's currently facing backlash for not communicating with Redva Loves Enough on the Bubble app. Bubble is a paid subscription service where fans of an artist can receive messages from their idols. These messages are only visible to subscribers on the app, and fans are able to send messages to their idols in return. On October 14, 2021, a South Korean online community forum user called out an SM Entertainment idol for not posting on Bubble since September. September 15, 2021. As people began to speculate on which idol this was, the user confirmed that they were referring to Red Velvet member Joy. They then pointed out that the other members of Red Velvet regularly send messages on Bubble, but Joy would only send 2 to 10 messages per month. As if Joy wasn't one of the busiest female idols right now. She's just finished promoting with her group and is currently filming a drama, so she probably doesn't even have enough time for herself. Some Revel loves are extremely upset with Joy's lack of communication, especially since they pay for the app. A lot a lot of them revealed that they had already canceled their subscription to the service, while others called out Joy for posting the same picture she posts on Instagram when the other Red Velvet members regularly share selfies and talk about what they did that day. This is especially frustrating to them since they're paying for the service. What do you think of the situation? I personally think that if they don't like the service, they can simply just unsubscribe and move on. It's not a life-threatening situation. The fact that JYP's and Hybe's new girl group's names have been leaked because the company wanted to copyright the name is so funny to me. A new trademark registration revealed the name of JYP's new girl group, which is NMIX, and fans found out about it much earlier before the company actually said anything. Amateur move, I know, but Hype fell for it as well. Back on October 12th, Hype labels registered the name Lesser of Femme for copyright. It's not known how Hype will use the name, but it's widely believed that it's the name of their upcoming girl group. It's rumored that Hype is preparing for not one, but three different girl groups. There's one who's rumored to have Eyes One Sakura as a member, there's one with Mean Hijin, and there's there's one that will debut members of Island too. Not like I'm a name expert, but I have no idea where Hybe is coming up with these names. What does it even mean? 2021 is a girl group disband parade, and I just want it to be over. I mean, this is really getting out of hand. G Friend, Barry Good, and Eyes One were all taken away from us, and if that wasn't enough, Lovelies might disband too. Since they debuted in 2014, their standard seven year contract should be coming to an end this year. The members have the option to renew their contracts and continue with Wu Liam or to pass it and leave the agency, but the future doesn't look too bright for them. October has been an especially frustrating time for Lovelies, as the members made public comments hinting at their dissatisfaction with the way the group is being handled. Earlier this month, Jean wrote a caption of a now-deleted Instagram post that she forgets her profession, stating that her Instagram account makes her look like a food blogger. What really propelled Lovelies' situation to the spotlight, however, came after a V-Live stream held by Jisoo on October 12th. She was answering questions sent to her through the V-Live chat box, where she came across many questions 
questions from fans regarding Lovely's status and their future plans. Jisoo outright stated, We have tried all we can. We told them that we wanted to release an album. It's not that we did not tell them. We did not hold back. This is our lives we are talking about, and to just waste so much of our lives like this is frustrating, and we feel sorry for our fans. It's really sad how Wulim only gives attention to the complaints when it reaches news outlets, but instead of doing anything about it, they stay silent while the members are the ones who have to apologize. I hope these girls find a better company that will treat them like they deserve. Speaking of things not looking good for idols, let's finally talk about Lucas. Even though SM have been trying everything to ignore the scandal altogether, it seems like Lucas's future at NCT and Wavy is now accompanied by a big question mark. Lucas came under fire back in August this year after multiple female netizens accused him of cheating and gaslighting, but we all know about that, right? Within days, Lucas's largest Chinese fan site resigned and his upcoming schedules were canceled by SM. Shortly afterwards, Lucas personally apologized for his actions and promised fans that he would deeply reflect on his behavior, which was definitely a forced apology. But in SM language, this apparently means that he's on his way out of the group and the company has already started on the process. The first step seems to be removing him from the official merchandise. Earlier this week, SM Town Store announced NCT's My Artist Card Pack merchandise kit that would be available for purchase at the company's store in Seoul. The pack appears to include random member photo cards, a photo card sleeve, and stickers featuring every name of all the members, well, except for Lucas. While the fans are divided on whether this is good or bad for him and the group's image overall, they seem to be united in one thing, that SM needs to release an official statement on whether he's still a part of the group. But SM is set on doing anything but being a decent company, and unfortunately, fans have to do the job that they're supposed to do, protect their artist. I've already discussed how much of the allegations against Lucas have already been proven false, but the fans have managed to debunk even more of the so-called proofs against him. First of all, user J4PZM on Twitter was the first one who posted the gaslighting allegations against Lucas, but they deleted the tweet minutes later. When Oh Shim then posted the exact same allegation shortly after, her tweets were discovered through a misspelled hashtag that has been previously and very frequently used by saucing accounts of the group. Now, I'm not a detective, but this seems very fishy. I mean, the connection is obvious. With this, a direct connection was found between the Sasang slash fansite masters and the third accuser's pin drop location. This location was also discovered to be the same hotel that Lucas was staying at and the place that Sasang at Luxor 0125 claimed to be their place of residence. Secondly, the third accuser claimed that Lucas was drinking with them at the hotel she booked when Lucas was wearing the jacket they claimed they bought him. The real photo was discovered and it showed that the picture was actually not taken at the hotel but a local residence in Hong Kong. Lies after lies, but this isn't even all of it. Lucas's fans also found similarities between at Oh Shames and Sasang at Fly Me to the Moon's Weibo accounts from when they came up with the allegations against Lucas right after he called them out for bribing staff members to trade seats so they could sit next to Yang Yang. This is just one of the few instances Lucas has been vocal about how much he dislikes Sasang, so it makes sense that they would pile up on him at the peak of his career. It was also found out that at Luxor 0125 showed support for Lucas at the end of August, but posted hateful comments on their private accounts in September, showing how manipulative and two-sided they were. On October 27th of 2019, they followed Lucas from Shanghai to Gimpo, which is the exact same date the third accuser claimed the WeChat conversations with Lucas happened. But no matter how much of this gets debunked, SM seems to be very keen on getting Lucas out of the group instead of handling the situation like they should have. These Sasangs need to face consequences for not only ruining his career and reputation, but affecting his mental health and ruining his life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch up with you soon. Bye.